it's just unbelievable that all the people walking around here and all the buildings that have been built on previous locations and streets that no one's got any idea that this all happened here over a hundred years ago. When you're walking around this area, the hustle and bustle, life just goes on as normal. People walking around, going to the pubs, going to work, working in offices, all the shops nearby. It's kind of crazy really to think about it over a hundred years ago how this area was. Please join me on this walk as we investigate the canonical five victims of Jack the Ripper. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, if you're looking around, please subscribe. I'm currently in Whitechapel. And I'm finding it extremely surreal that I'm standing here on Dirtwood Street, which was formerly Bucks Row. So just directly in front of us, in the middle of the screen, you've got a bollard. Just a bit further up to the right, you've got that dark area. That's the train station entrance for Whitechapel. And just further up, just beyond that a little bit, next to that brick wall where that building is, that brown wall in the middle of the screen, that is where Mary Ann Nichols was found, the first victim of Jack the Ripper. I'm gonna try and insert a picture here of what it used to look like. So this building here is the old board school building on Derwood Street, which was formerly Bucks Row. And this building's been here since 1888, or previously, before 1888. It's currently walking down towards the station. Okay, so just here again, I'm gonna try and insert a picture of what this road used to look like. So just here, you've got the entrance to Whitechapel Station, and just in front of me where the bikes are, just to the left, is where Mary Ann Nichols' body was found. So Mary Ann Nichols was the first canonical victim of Jack the Ripper, killed on the 31st of August, 1888. Her throat had been cut from left to right and right to left. The evidence showed that the wounds were so deep that the knife was used violently and plunged downwards. The wounds inflicted on her body were going from left to right, suggesting a left-handed killer. Okay, so this building just in front of me is the Tower Hamlets Town Hall, which was the original Royal London Hospital. I believe in 1888 it was called the London Hospital. Just behind it is a brand new building, which is the Royal London Hospital. This is the original site for the original London Hospital. So this hospital was where the From Hell Letter and the kidney was sent to. Originally sent to Mr. Lusk. I believe Mr. Lusk then took it to this hospital to be researched.
Okay, so we're just walking down at the minute on uh, Hanbury Street. It's quite a long street though. We've come out of Whitechapel, Durwood Street, uh, right past London Hospital. And now we're heading down towards uh, Hanbury Street, 29. So 29 Hanbury Street is the place where Annie Chapman was killed back in 1888. Obviously, 29 Hanbury Street is not there anymore. It's been built upon, but we're going to do our best to get some images and footage of the area. And I'm going to try and insert a clip from YouTube of what Hanbury Street was like. Hello. Can I come in for a few minutes? Thank you. Spitalfield is Jack the Ripper territory. The old people here even remember some of his murders. In this yard, just over there, Jack disposed of victim number two, and the poor of the parish clubbed together to buy a nice wreath for her funeral. These streets are exactly the same as they were at that time. Annie Chapman was the second victim of Jack the Ripper. She was found in 29 Hanbury Street. There were also signs of strangulation with Annie Chapman due to swelling and bruising around the mouth and neck area. Annie Chapman's womb, bladder and uterus were all missing. Annie Chapman was killed on the 8th of September, 1888. So we're currently on uh, Hanbury Street here. And this is the uh, place the second victim was found, Annie Chapman. 29 Hanbury Street would have been just about here. Just in between these two pillars, basically. I'm going to try and insert an image just there. Okay guys, so we're currently on uh, Gunthorpe Street in London, in the Whitechapel area. We're looking for a pub called The White Heart. It's got a uh, blue plaque on the wall outside. With a little bit of information about Jack the Ripper on it, so I'm gonna try and get that in the next clip. Okay guys, so we found this sign on Gunthorpe Street. This is on the side of the White Heart pub. So this pub just in front of me, called the White Hart in London, Gunfall Street, is where George Chapman lived, who was a suspect in the Jack the Ripper case. Just on this uh, archway, we've got a map of the old Whitechapel.
If you're in the area and you fancy fish and chips, I suggest you head here, Whitechapel Road. So this pub just in front of us here is where the uh, George Chapman suspect lived, the White Hart. So we're currently walking down now towards Enrique Street, which was originally called Burner Street. And that was the site of the third victim, Elizabeth Stride. So back in 1888, most of the Ripper victims suffered the same fate, starting off with a slit throat from left to right and right to left. Elizabeth Stride, where we're heading to now, was the only victim who suffered a slit throat only. Now, supposedly, the Ripper was disturbed during the killing. So just in front of us would have been called Burner Street, but it's now called Enrique Street. I'm going to try and line up a picture here. But this is where the third victim was found and killed. So we're currently on Enrique Street, which is formerly Burner Street. And this is the site of the third murder victim, Elizabeth Stride. Okay, so this is Enrique Street, formerly known as Burner Street. Just in front of us, you have an old school building. But I'm going to insert a picture here of what it actually was like back in 1888. Elizabeth Stride was killed on the 30th of September. She was found with a throat cut. Uniquely in this case, this is the only injury she sustained due to the ripper being disturbed at the time. And just across the road there, where the black gates are in the centre of the screen, is where Elizabeth Stride was found. This is Enrique Street today. So Elizabeth Stride was killed just here, and this site was formerly known as Duffield's Yard. We've got a Boar's Head Playhouse just here. Okay, so we're just approaching Maya Square now, just directly in front of us. Catherine Eddowes, the fourth victim, was also killed on the 30th of September, 1888. She was found in Mitre Square. So Catherine Eddowes, who was the fourth victim of Jack the Ripper, was found just about here in front of me, near these black gates.
Oh, Jack the Clipper. Oh, Barb was there. Right, so just in front of us there you've got Christchurch and then in the middle of the screen now you've got the Ten Bells pub and to our left just over here would have been where Dorset Street was, the home of Mary Kelly. Right, this drinking fountain from 1860 is a unique spot. I'm going to show you why in the next clip. Just think who could have drank out of this drinking fountain in 1888. Okay, if you stand with your back at that water fountain, what you're looking at now in front of me is a department store, Blackbridge and Uniqlo. But this is where Dorset Street would have been. I'm going to try and insert a clip here or a picture of what it used to look like. But this is where Mary Kelly would have lived, in the middle of the court, straight in front of me. So what would have been Dorset Street, just in front of me, was known as the worst street in London. Police could go down there, but only in fours, groups of four. You couldn't go down there on your own, or in pairs. It had to be in groups of four. Mary Kelly lived and died in Dorset Street. Okay, so supposedly this pub in front of us, the Ten Bells, all of the victims were said to have known each other and all at some point drank in the Ten Bells pub. Even the Ripper himself could have drank in there. So these buildings just in front of me here, just uh, where the Ten Bells is, just down there. I'm not sure if they're rebuilt to look like this or they're original, but uh, I'm guessing that's what it would have been like down Dorset Street in a way. On the 9th of November, Mary Kelly was killed, found murdered in her apartment. The injuries sustained on Mary Kelly were the worst of the Ripper victims. Her face was hacked to pieces, her arms had been hacked, skin had been removed from her thighs and legs. Most of her upper internal organs were left around the room. The body of Mary Kelly could only be identified by the landlord recognising her elopes. The five victims were all buried locally in East London. Elizabeth Stride was buried in a Plasto cemetery. Mary Kelly was buried in St. Patrick's Leytonstone. Catherine Eddowes and Mary Ann Nichols was buried in the City of London Cemetery and Annie Chapman was buried in Manor Park. Mary Ann Nichols was killed on Durwood Street, which was known then as Bucks Row. Annie Chapman was killed at 29 Hanbury Street. Elizabeth Stride was killed in Duckfield's Yard. Catherine Eddowes was killed in Mitre Square and Mary Kelly was killed in Miller's Court, Dorset Street. So like I said guys, at the time, Dorset Street was the worst street in London. Um, police couldn't go down there on their own, solo, or in pairs, or even in threes. They had to go down there in fours. It was that dangerous. And Mary Kelly lived halfway down, I believe, uh, Dorset Street, to the left through a little archway, which led to Miller's Court, where she lived in a little one-bedroom dwelling. So there possibly is a few more victims to Jack the Ripper, linked to him at the time. But the main five that they consist of are the five that we've named in this video, and they're known as the Canical Five. Today, Walking around the sites, it's been quite surreal when we arrived at Whitechapel today and seeing that some of the buildings that were there in 1888 are still there now. 
it's kind of surreal looking at it and thinking like if walls could talk you know you've got these buildings here Jack the Ripper was around at the time these women were getting killed you've got Christchurch building still here you've got Spitalfields Market still there the Ten Bells pub still there all these sites that were still there over 150 years ago I believe it is now can't believe it it's all good doing tours and everything but coming here and doing it on your own as well is absolutely it's a beautiful day it's just a very surreal experience knowing that you're walking in the footsteps that some of these women took and even Jack the Ripper himself. If you are enjoying the video though guys, please do subscribe, please share, like, comment. Any interaction with the video really help boost this channel. So we're just getting to the end of the video now. We've visited the five sites. We've gone through some of the history. It's just past three o'clock in the afternoon. It's Thursday, the 1st of August, 2024. When you're walking around this area, the hustle and bustle, Life just goes on as normal, people walking around, going to the pubs, going to work, working in offices, all the shops nearby. It's kind of crazy really to think about it, over a hundred years ago how this area was. Okay guys, so we've decided to uh, pay our respects to the victims of Jack the Ripper, the five canical victims, by visiting their graves in East London. So we're currently just at the grave of Elizabeth Stride, who was killed in Burner Street, Duffield Yard. I believe that Elizabeth Stride's the only victim that still has a remaining grave. The others are buried in various locations throughout different cemeteries in East London. Okay guys, so we're currently in Manor Park Cemetery, East London, and here we have a plaque dedicated to the memory of Annie Chapman, who died on the 8th of September, 1888, and was the second victim of Jack the Ripper. Her remains are buried within this area. Okay, so this is the uh, tombstone for Annie Chapman, marking the site in general of the area where she was buried back in 1888. Annie Chapman died the 8th of September 1888 and he was a tragic victim of the infamous Jack the Ripper. She is laid to rest within this area. May she rest in peace. Okay guys, so Annie Chapman was the second victim of Jack the Ripper, found in 29 Hanbury Street with her throat cut. She'd also been mutilated and her womb and uterus were missing. So guys, we're currently in the Manor Park Cemetery, East London, and uh, we've got here the site of Annie Chapman's grave. The thing is, with these graves from these women, most of them, I think Elizabeth Stride is the only one who really has a grave still remaining where the rest of the women were uh, buried in commoner graves, where they was lower class and had not much money, I suppose. And them graves have since been reused. So the actual graves of where they were, they're still somewhere in this ground. But I think other people have also been buried there since on top of the old graves and among them. And I'll show you now in the next clip where you've got all these overgrown graves here what, in what was the common land, the common ground. So Annie Chapman's actual remains could be anywhere within the area that I'm standing at the moment. So Annie Chapman, Elizabeth Stride and Mary Kelly all have plaques or tombstones where Mary Nichols and Catherine Eddowes just have two plaques located in the City of London Cemetery, which we're going to go and visit now. So we're just paying our respects to Annie Chapman here. It's an overcast day today. It's very poignant. We're going to move on now to the City of London Cemetery, visiting the plaques of Mary Nichols and Catherine Eddowes. And then we're going to end our journey today at St. Patrick's Cemetery in Leytonstone, visiting the final resting place of Jack the Ripper's youngest victim, 
Mary Kelly. Okay guys, so where Catherine Eddowes is, the plaque for her anyway, is just behind me on the floor there. And then a few short paces forward, in front of me, underneath these trees, beautiful row of trees here, but underneath these trees, just coming up, is the plaque for Mary Ann Nichols. Mary Ann Nichols was the first victim of Jack the Ripper. Okay, so Mary Ann Nichols was the first victim of Jack the Ripper, and this is her memorial plaque. Died 31st of August, 1888. This is in the city of London Cemetery, and like with the other victims, there's coins left on the graves and plaques. Okay, so over here, City of London Cemetery, you have the memorial plaques for Catherine Eddowes and Mary Ann Nichols. Catherine Eddowes being the fourth victim of Jack the Ripper that was killed in Mitre Square. Okay, so I'm just walking back to the car now. We've got one more stop to visit. Another cemetery, this time being St. Patrick's Catholic Cemetery in Leytonstone. And that's where we find the fifth and final canonical victim of Jack the Ripper, Mary Jane Kelly. Okay, just while we are over here, guys, just real quickly, um, there's one more plaque I want to show you. Not directly related to Jack the Ripper, but uh, around the same time as Jack the Ripper. I'm gonna go and find it. It's just in the Memorial Gardens. As we walk through here, I'm gonna show you guys what it is we've got here. I'm just approaching it now. Again, it's another plaque on the ground, and this is the final resting place for Joseph Kerry Merrick, who is also known as the Elephant Man. So I believe after his passing, Joseph Kerry Merrick, his bones were donated to the Royal London Hospital for further study, but all his other remains and his bodily tissues were cremated and laid to rest here at the City of London Cemetery. I suppose he was a pretty prominent character in the area around 1888, whilst the killings were going on. There's even a far-fetched theory that he was possibly Jack the Ripper, but I haven't really looked into that one. It's just something I've seen recently. Okay guys, so we're currently in Leytonstone, St. Patrick's Catholic Cemetery. And we're just approaching now the gravestone for Mary Jane Kelly, who was Jack the Ripper's final and youngest victim. There is a story linked to this gravestone that it was paid for by the actor Mickey Rock. After hearing the story of Mary Kelly, he decided to donate this gravestone in memory of her. I need to find out the facts on that though. I don't have any more information, but that is the story that I've heard. As you can see on the gravestone itself, like all the other ones, this one has a bit more than the rest of them. But people do leave coins on these graves for the victims of Jack the Ripper. In love and memory of Marie Jeanette Kelly, none but the lonely hearts can know my sadness. Love lives forever. Okay guys, that brings us to the end of our Jack the Ripper tour today. If you've enjoyed the video, if you've got this far, please leave a like, please comment, please subscribe to the channel. Any interaction with the video will really help boost it out there on YouTube. So we're just about to exit the cemetery, and as we uh, made our way back to the exit, literally I just walked past, looked to the right, and then behind me here is John McCarthy's tombstone, who was Mary Kelly's landlord. Hopefully, whoever's made it this far, you've enjoyed. If you have, please leave a thumbs up, please like, Please let me know in the comments and please subscribe to the channel for more content. I do plan another Jack the Ripper video with a bit more detail at some point. It's just getting the time to do things at the moment, but uh, 
I'll carry on making content where I can and when I can. But anyone that has reached it this far, thank you for watching guys, much appreciated. Take care.